Have you ever wondered about how life and nature are always on the move, always busy, working away, always helping us, even when we're asleep and dreaming, or playing, laughing, so happy, and even when we're worshipping and praising the Creator? Yes, nature's never still. She's always on the move, always offering us a helping hand. Day and night, under our feet, often invisible to the human eye, making and renewing life for us all. But have you ever stopped to think of the ways you can help as well? How you can help the process so busy helping you? Compost. What an amazing difference it can make to your garden. Not only does it help build up that all-important topsoil, but it also allows all those worms to create space for the air and water to circulate, so that the roots of the plants can breathe, drink and feed. It adds structure, and that means it can hold more nutrients and water, just like a sponge. Meet Sibonica Liso. Not only does it mean it saves time on watering, but it means I don't have to buy fertilizer. So think about the saving. Why should we need to buy fertilizer when we do have all the ingredients around us of doing a good compost? So how do we do it? Choose a site with some shade. A good compost heap should be at least one meter square. One meter by one meter. And build it directly onto the ground so that earthworms, those little red wrigglers, and other organisms can move into it and do part of the work for you. Because these are our living composters. Good compost will have around three times more carbon than nitrogen. 70% carbon, 30% nitrogen. So let's think about what you can put into your compost. First, carbon. Carbon includes material from your garden. Grass. Straw. and leaves as well. And you can use sawdust. And how about shredded paper? Remember, the smaller you cut it all up, the quicker it'll decompose. Then there's fresh, I repeat, fresh kitchen waste. All these are good carbon materials. And what else? What do you have? to add to the carbon pile. But now, nitrogen. For your nitrogen, you need something different, like animal manures, yarrow, comfrey, clover, are a good source of nitrogen too. And finally, rotten, Yes, this time, rotten kitchen waste. But just leave your bones, potato skins, and citrus fruits aside. And to top it off, 
Well, yes. Why not? <laughs> Straw from animal or poultry bedding is great too, and decomposes even quicker. So when you muck out your animals, add this to your nitrogen pile as well. Don't worry about keeping back all your kitchen waste and weeds for compost. No, give some of it to your chickens and let them do the work for you. And they'll reward you with some lovely fresh eggs. Waste nothing, that's the motto. Waste nothing and reinvest your surplus. Collect all your materials together before you start. You should have around 70% carbon, 30% nitrogen. So, now we're ready to begin. Right. Begin with a layer of rough material like maize stover, coarse grass and small sticks, which will help draw the air into the heap. Add a layer of the carbon material, which needs to be about three times thicker than the nitrogen one. Now, add a nitrogen layer. That's all your manure, yarrow, clover, comfrey, the rotten kitchen waste you've collected. This is going to activate your compost. Remember, 70% carbon to 30% nitrogen. Three to one. Add a thin layer of topsoil. Keep doing this. Carbon, nitrogen, carbon, nitrogen. Until the pile is at least one meter high. One meter. Well, he's about a meter, wouldn't you say? It's a bit like building a giant sandwich. Make sure you water after each layer. Just enough water to keep the layers damp, but not too much. Don't waterlog. Then cover the heap with straw mulch and finish it off with old rice sacks to keep the moisture in and to stop the heat from getting out. And finally, remove the pole to create a chimney for the hot air inside. That's it. And now, now we wait. We wait while nature gets to work. And all those red wrigglers and tiny microorganisms do their job, breaking all the material down, day by day, changing it into a nice, rich compost for you and your garden. Time. Patience. Wait. Sunday. Sibona Kaliso calls together his scouts. While we are waiting for the compost to develop, I'm going to show my scouts how to make a really, really good fertilizer tea. Because while the compost is going to feed the soil, which will feed your family, this tea is like a drink high in nitrogen for your plants. <laughs> Making this tea is really quite simple and it's going to provide you with a good fertilizer. First, you crumble your dried animal waste into a maize sack. You don't need much just about half full, and attach it to a nice, strong stick. Then tie it up firmly at the top. 
and suspend it in the water. Yes, just like a giant tea bag. But while it's brewing, remember to cover it. It's going to make a pretty big stink. After two weeks of brewing, it'll be so strong you'll need to dilute it before watering. Otherwise, it'll burn your plants. But use it within a month before it loses its strength. As different manures have different strengths, chicken manure, for instance, is the highest in nitrogen, you need to think about which manure you could use and how much you'd need to dilute it. Right, now let's go back to our compost heap. After three days, check the heat of the compost. It'll be very hot. You can even cook an egg in it. After another three days, it'll start to cool down. So leave it alone. After 10 days, you need to turn or fold the heap so that the material on the outside now goes inside. Look, like this. And if necessary, add some more water to keep it all nice and damp. But remember, not too much. Right, for good measure, now that it's cooling down, it's not a bad moment to add in a few more juicy red wrigglers to help it compost. And that's it. There's your compost heap. And it'll be ready when all the material has been fully broken down. Times will vary, but it'll be ready between six to eight weeks. And you'll know, because firstly, it'll look like soil. Yes, black gold. And secondly, It'll smell as sweet as a baby. Wonderful. Soon he'll have maize and lovely beans for his family. And all with less weeding and watering to do. All helped along by his use of a good compost. Healthy soil makes healthy plants, and they make healthy people. And any one of us can make one just by using what is available and all around us, wastes which we reinvest and turn back into life. By feeding his soil, he's feeding his family. And by growing surplus, he's also making extra income. And extra income means extra things for him and his family. Compost, nature helping me and me helping nature, working together as a team, Wonderful. Just look at the result.